<laughs> Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times and what's left of the paradise of Gainesville, Florida here on this glorious winter day, Friday, January 11th, 2019, somewhere around there. And uh, of course, I'm already running late to uh, take the little dog into an alligator infested swamp for his new life in Florida. And before I do that, since it is Friday, I'm going to do what I do every Friday, and that's bringing you this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant to see how this planet has been heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour in the opening bell of 2019. And I'm just going to do uh, Manga Bay Center for Biological Diversity and... <clears throat> Washington Post. We're just going to put them all in the same roundup today. And as I mentioned in the earlier rant, there has been a tragedy at Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I left my bullshit detector button and my no shit Sherlock button in Texas. So uh, there is, so you will have to decide which button Hambone Little Tail would be pushing. <coughs> and the opening headline. From the Apocal Optimist at Manga Bay, community-based conservation offers hope, offers hope for Amazon's giant South American turtle. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think we can move on from that bullshit. They are really doing the Salamander Apocalypse Chronicles at, uh, at Manga Bay for the third week in a row, uh, we're looking at the salamander apocalypse, where a pandemic is on the horizon for salamanders. There you go, we can kiss goodbye the salamanders. Um, habit, so up until now, up until this global salamander pandemic, slams into the U.S. any day now. Uh, so up till now, habitat loss has been the main reason behind declines of U.S. salamanders. And no shit, Sherlock. Invasive species like pigs are also a growing threat to many species. And researchers think that the global decline in insect abundance may also be greatly affecting them. You take all of that and you add this new global salamander pandemic, and we all know these salamanders are fucked. Wow. We're going to go over to the shithole country of somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa. Wow. You would never believe this. <clears throat> that a rapid population drop has wink has weakened the growers gorilla gene pool. Hmm. Do you think so? The loss of 80% of all of growers gorillas in the past 20 years has led to a severe reduction in the subspecies genetic diversity. Hmm. Yes. Scientists are still looking for signs of hope. <sighs> looking for signs of hope. Okay, I've already done this story. I think uh, it might have been on that other, on Collapse Chronicles, I might have done this story yesterday. This is uh, Manga Bay's spin on the Monarch Butterfly Collapse. We were looking at it uh, in California. They're, they're going down to Mexico asking the question, why are fewer monarch butterflies overwintering in Mexico? Hmm. Yes. Uh, take a while. I can give you about 7.6 billion reasons. But there, here's a new, a, a new weird theory. Uh, suggest one possible cause as is that monarchs 
are finding places other than Mexico to spend the winter months and possibly even giving up their migratory ways altogether in order to survive. I don't even I, I that would be a whole nother rant. Anyway, uh, I, I'm personally not buying into that theory, uh, but I am not a monarch researcher. Uh, okay, let's go to the shithole country of Uganda for the the apocaloptimist knee slapper of the week. If you thought the Amazon giant turtle one was it, how about Uganda targets children for conservation awareness? There you go. Uh, yes, the the only uh, concert, the only conservation issue that children in Uganda are aware of is the stew pot. Okay, I mentioned this when a couple of people have sent me this story. We bidding a farewell to George. <coughs> Rest in peace, George, the last known. Hawaiian snail of his kind dies at 14 years old. There you go. George was emblematic of the plight of Hawaiian land snails which are threatened by habitat loss and the introduction of predatory species such as humans. Alright. Wow, imagine this, in the shithole country of Indonesia, hazy figures cloud Indonesia's peat restoration as fire season looms. Hmm, do you think so? Oh, Jesus. Uh, okay, we're going to save pumas in Chile by installing flashing lights around alpaca herds. Oh yes, uh, that's gonna... Oh, Jesus. Actually, you know, my, my neighbor in Austin uh, does this thing with this little flashing red light. She insists to me it's, it's to keep raccoons away. Uh, this little flashing red light in her backyard and she acts like it really does keep rack and I say darling your little flashing red light is attracting every fucking uh, every fucking raccoon in South Austin if I was a puma in Chile looking for a tender little alpaca calf what I would look for now is like wow every time I see one of these little flashing lights on the fence I I bet within 50 feet of that little light is some plump little alpaca, baby. Oh, God, how stupid do they fucking think cougars are? Uh, well, here's a real important conservation uh, story. New species of tree frog has a mysterious claw. There you go. Uh, okay. Back to Indonesia. Indonesia seeks global global pushback on illegal fishing. Okay, I think we know which button anyone anyway, thinking Indonesia uh, is pushing a global pushback on illegal. My guess is Indonesia is probably and certainly in the top ten illegal fishers. Uh, Jesus, here is 200 cockatoos confiscated in Indonesia. They were, 23 of them were stuffed into water bottles. Good God, we're so fucked. All right. Here is one more way. We're fucked to think about. 
Okay, did you realize that policy makers, I love that word, policy makers, that uh, oxymoron for the end times, policy makers are not adequately factoring land use and human diets into climate mitigation strategies. Are you leaving, little dog? Have you heard enough? Fine. Are you just going to go lay on your tuffet? Little Miss Muffet is over on her tuffet, but you cannot see the little... Anyway, uh, <clears throat> did you realize that governments and researchers routinely underestimate the potential for changes to land use and, high, and human diets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, as they are not adequately accounting for the amount of carbon that could be stored in forest and other natural vegetation if those lands were not used for producing food for humans. Hmm, imagine that. That would be the no shit Sherlock button. Uh, wow. As long as we have the imaginary no shit Sherlock button in my hand, journalists reporting on the environment faced increased dangers in 2018, ranging from intimidation to legal threats to outright violence at least 10 environmental journalists have taken you know, a bullet to their head, have been gunned down in the last six years. Uh, all but two of them in Asia. Yes. Uh, okay. Let's see. More... Uh, eavesdrop on forest sounds to effectively monitor biodiversity. I need to uh, interview, there is some guy that I need to interview. What this is talking about, and uh, it really is, it, it, it's the, the, these studies, these bioacoustic studies over the years where what they do is, you know, they'll, they'll take a camera in somewhere and record it, what it sounds like before the planet eaters get there, and then they go back after the planet eaters have been there with their no shit Sherlock. Uh, you know, over time, uh, you can listen to literally mostly with insects, insects and songbirds disappearing. And uh, this one guy, what he does is he goes around hitting the bullshit detector button on all these people who act like. A selective logging. I don't know if he's part of this story. I need to interview this guy. His shtick is he goes around all of these places that in the, these limp dick mainstream environmentalists are claiming are success stories. And it looks like the, the forests are regenerating, but, but he goes back and plays, you're following me here, what it sounded like at this spot, you know, 20 years ago. Then he brings the recordings and it's, it's, it's a fucking museum is what it is. I mean, a library or whatever. Uh, anyway, I need to do, a, I need to track that guy down. I bet his name is somewhere in this story. All right. Uh, did you realize that in Manga Bay, probably because of my undying efforts on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, I will take most of the credit for this, that Manga Bay had 100 million hits on its website last year. Good for them. Uh, here's another uh, another knee slapper in the brand new Bozo Naro administration. Yes. Uh, so of course this is talking about before Bozo Naro. Uh, took over the reins down there. Brazil's indigenous agency acts to protect the isolated Kawahiva people. Yes, uh, giving 
the Kawahiva tribe, their own reserve, was controversial from the start and strongly opposed by loggers and agribusiness who denied the tribe even existed. Hmm. And now the, uh, the agency fears that the Bozo administration will refuse to demarcate the reserve and possibly even try to abolish it. Wow, imagine that. Uh, I've already uh, done a, a rant on this next one. This is pretty much the whole planet. <clears throat> this is their spin on this story that I covered uh, last week, I believe. The worst mass extinction event in Earth's history was caused by global warming analogous to our current climate crisis. And we all know which uh, button to push on that one, and the no shit Sherlock button. The Permian period ended about 250 million years ago with the largest recorded mass extinction in Earth's history. Um, and an event known as the Great Dying. Uh, and according to Justin Penn, we need to interview Justin. Uh, his research is saying the Permian extinction can help us understand the impacts of climate change in our own current era. Uh, <clears throat> the Permian mass extinction was caused by rising ocean temperatures. On that other channel, I talked about that ocean temperatures are rising faster than previously expected. Right here, the Permian mass extinction was caused by rising ocean temperature, which in turn forced the metabolism of marine animals to speed up, and blah, blah. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, but we got to move on, because uh, I got a lot of doom and gloom uh, to, to cover here before I get off and feed my dog to an alligator. Alright, let's go over to those eco-Nazis at the Washington Post. What is on their minds today? Going in hand in hand with the story we wrapped up from Manga Bay. You have... <laughs> U.S. greenhouse gas emissions spiked in 2018, and it could not happen at a worse time. Hmm. Our nation is now far off course from what the Obama administration promised under the Paris Agreement, leaving a big gap for the rest of the world to make up. Uh-huh. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, wow, here is Fiat Chrysler uh, now being accused and fined $800 million for installing software. That enables their diesel trucks to emit far more pollutants than emissions laws allow. Mm, no shit, Sherlock. Now this one actually goes against what I was just hearing at uh, over there on NPR. Uh, oil drillers and nature lovers get access to public lands despite the shutdown. Uh, what I was hearing on NPR is a good thing about the government. They were talking about the good parts of a uh, of the government shutdown is that the these oil drillers you know that Donald Trump has rolled out the red carpet to to go over there and invade our public lands well guess what the BLM is shut down so the these planet eaters cannot move forward with their uh, you, you know with their attempt to drill on public lands because Donald Trump has shut down the government. 
Anyway, good for the government shutdown. Uh, here as uh, talking about some goddamn toxic paint stripper. Jesus. Uh, here is some story about the no shit Sherlock, this conflict of interest <clears throat> between the EPA's Andrew Wheeler and outside groups. No shit Sherlock. Uh, <coughs> here's their version of the mounting garbage problem and the national parks due to the government shutdown. Um, three people have died in the National Park System accidents in the shutdown. Uh, now, of course, who knows how many would have died if the damn government hadn't been shut down. Alright, but let's wrap up over there at Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth for our Ecological Meltdown Roundup. What are they doing with the lawsuit department? Lawsuit launched over failure to protect 26 species. Yes. Wolverines and 25 other species. Uh, this is the center's Noah Greenwald. Did you realize that, quote, political interference and neglect are pushing every one of these species toward the brink of extinction. From wolverines to wolves, uh, this is the upcoming wolf wars ramping up in 2019 as the Trump administration is gearing to strip protection from nearly every single wolf in the lower 48 states. It will be a devastating blow to one of America's most iconic species, returning us to the days when wolves were shot on sight, killed in traps, and relentlessly persecuted. Members of Congress and some states are also gunning back for them. Oh. Here is what 2019 holds for wildlife and water. Did you realize that last year, endangered species, protected lands, and clean air and clean water took hits in 2018? And uh, take a wild guess what that means for 2019. But we have some small glimmer of good news coming out of the shithole state of Oregon for the Martins, for the fewer than 200 Humboldt Pine Martins surviving in Oregon. Uh, wow, we have some new rules on trapping them, but of course it says nothing about habitat destruction, which is their biggest one. Uh, here's zeroing in on the red wolf, about Trump's red wolf extinction plan. Good God. All right, what is going on with plastic production, production in 2019? Last year was all about banning plastic straws. Ha! Huh. Did you realize that banning plastic straws is not enough? Ha! Huh. To turn the tide on plastic pollution. I am so glad the Center for Biological Diversity. But even though we are already dumping about 8 million tons of plastic into our oceans every year, which kills marine life and takes centuries to break down. Big Oil wants to make more of it. Uh, this year, we must curb plastic production before it is too late for wildlife.
Hmm. Let's choose the planet. Let's choose the planet over plastic. Oh, uh, yeah. Here is a, now a lawsuit to protect Utah and Arizona from dirty air. All right, more about spread the love by giving away condoms on Valentine's Day. Each endangered species condom package shares information about a threatened species and what we can do to save space for wildlife. Yeah, so we're going to save the planet from clueless breeders with endangered species condoms. This is the latest story on... Wait, uh, anyway, we're, going, we're just going to end up, I think we're just going to end up with spread the love by giving away condoms on Valentine's Day. I could go on with this, but uh, I guess uh, if you're going to be fucked, it might as well, we might as well be fucked with an endangered species condom on Valentine's Day 2019. I cannot think of a better way to be fucked than with an endangered species condom. Oh, God. Anyway, guys, I gotta wrap this up because I realize A, I am talking to myself, and B, uh, there's probably a, an alligator with Sancho's name on it uh, waiting for us to get to the swamp. So, I uh, don't know when I will be back on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, whether I will be uh, bringing you a rant from the swamp or not. I'm sure we can bring you some sort of rant from the swamp. For this rant, smoke them if you got them, and we all know why. With or without endangered species condoms, we are so fucked. Bye, guys.